Hi everybody. In this video, I answer the questions, why is it important to motivate students? And what factors affect students' motivation? This video is part of a series of videos related to motivating others. To understand why it's important to motivate students, we first need to understand what motivation is. Motivation is the extent to which one intends to engage in an activity. Notice that the person hasn't done anything yet, but they intend to, for whatever reason. For example, this girl may intend to do these three things, but she hasn't done them yet. The word extent here refers to the magnitude of the intent, which is represented by the thickness of the arrows. So you can see that she really intends to do the first activity. She has less intent to do the second activity, and even less intent to do the third activity. Therefore, she begins by engaging in the first activity. Engagement can describe either participating in the activity, which is called behavioral engagement, or thinking about some aspect of the activity, which is called cognitive engagement. Then, theoretically, her engagement should lead to increased learning and higher performance. This is a basic model that some researchers have used to understand the relationships between these variables. And it answers the first question here, why is it important to motivate students? It's important because it leads to increased engagement and learning. And learning is usually the ultimate goal of instruction. Now let's answer this second question. What factors affect students' motivation? Understanding the answer to this question will allow us to design instruction that motivates students. So far, I've explained that motivation leads to engagement, which leads to positive outcomes, such as learning and performance. Researchers have found that five factors affect students' motivation in a course, their perceptions of empowerment, usefulness, success, interest, and caring. We can remember these five key perceptions with the acronym MUSIC. Let me explain each of these a little more. Empowerment refers to students feeling empowered by having the ability to make decisions about their learning. Usefulness refers to students understanding why what they are learning is useful for their short or long-term goals. Success refers to students believing that they can succeed if they put forth the effort. Interest refers to students being interested in the content and instructional activities. And caring refers to students believing that others in the learning environment care about their learning and about them as a person. These five perceptions are critical to students' motivation which is why teachers need to consider these perceptions when they design their instruction. Here we can see that instructors' teaching strategies are external variables that can influence students' music perceptions. However, there are also other external variables that affect students' course perceptions, such as their family and peers, and the culture and society in which they live. These external factors interact with students' internal variables, which are inside their head. For instance, cognition includes students' thoughts, beliefs, goals, and values. Of course, there are many other internal variables, such as students' affect, that is, their emotions and moods, as well as their psychological and physiological needs and desires. They also have beliefs about their identity, in other words, who they see themselves as now or becoming in the future. And students have their own personality characteristics. For example, some people are more extroverted than others, or more agreeable, or conscientious than others. These are just some of the important internal variables that can affect students' perceptions in a course. So what we see here is how external and internal variables affect students' perceptions about a course, which affects their motivation, engagement, and learning in the course. But it doesn't stop there. This is a cycle so that students examine the outcomes, and that may change their internal variables. For example, if a student thought they were good at a subject but then did poorly on a test, their thoughts about their ability in that subject may be lowered, and the teacher might change their instructional strategies in order to review the concepts so that they could learn more of the content. This cycle continues over time, sometimes fairly quickly. Finally, we need to remember that students often have several goals other than engaging in a course, such as playing sports, hanging out with friends, or doing homework from another course. Therefore, Students need to make cost-benefit decisions to determine which activities to engage in at any one time. These decisions are represented here in the model, where the top row of boxes shows that students are motivated for other activities, 
and they must decide which activity to engage in at any one time. Ultimately, instructors only have control over their teaching strategies, but they can use those to shape students' perceptions in a course. In another video, I provide many different teaching strategies that instructors can use to affect students' music perceptions, and I have a long list on my website and over 100 in my book. If you're wondering how the music model was created, it was based on many different motivation theories, including those shown here. These excellent researchers have provided many different perspectives about motivation and how they can be used to motivate students in classes. The strengths of the music model are that unlike other motivation theories, it was designed specifically to provide a framework for teachers to use based on current motivation science. And teachers can use the model to more intentionally design instruction to motivate their students. These strengths make it well suited for teachers to use as part of their instructional design. The music model can also be used to diagnose problems hindering motivation and to research factors associated with motivating others. In fact, researchers around the world are using it to better understand students' motivation. That concludes my fairly brief explanation of the factors that affect students' motivation. As you can see, there's a lot of factors, but teachers who focus on strategies related to the five music model categories will be well on their way to engaging students in their class. For more information, please check out this website and book. The links are provided in the description below. And leave a like and subscribe with notifications on so you won't miss any of Dr. Jones's new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.